Well, hello, hello today. We are honored to have with us Jeremy Scrivens. Jeremy is an innovation expert and enthusiast. He coaches and mentors leaders to start up, start up or transform the workplace by collaborating and innovating in order to elevate, extend and multiply the strengths of the enterprise and its people. Jeremy is a recognized appreciative inquiry facilitator coaching large scale positive change, engagement and innovation in multiple enterprises in Australia, New Zealand, UK and Asia. Prior to this, Jeremy spent 25 years as a senior human resources, sorry, HR and workforce, workforce transformation leader. Jeremy is a global player on social media with a growing reputation as a thought leader and facilitator on the future of work in the digital age. He is a sought after speaker and facilitator of organizational transformation. Hello, Jeremy. Welcome to our podcast. Hi, how are you? Good to be here. Thank you. Thanks for your time and for your generosity. We would like to know uh, today in this very crazy world, what is your perspective or what do you think of this global state of the world? How do you see this? Well, we, we seem to be living in, in un, unprecedented times. Um, I think we're seeing the best and the worst of humanity at the moment. And, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I like to focus on, on the best. So I, I'm a great believer in a strengths-based approach. Um, and I, 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 but I think we've organized for, 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 for a long time around seeing the world as problems and, and, and we respond to this as a crisis um, and we're responding to it from the way we've tended to organize human effort uh, in the, in, for some time now, which is to separate things. So we see, well, at the moment we're seeing individual countries responding to, um, to the crisis. And we're seeing, uh, we're not seeing collaboration across uh, humanity um, because we have been set up uh, with the idea of, of, of competition as being more important yeah. than collaboration, in my, in my opinion. Um, our language is around competition. Our language around in, in politics is around uh, is adversarial. Our, our language um, in in business is competitive. So, for example, right now I don't know the exact, exact figures, but I know that there are many different um, uh, companies and universities around the world trying to create the vaccine, right, or a vaccine. We know that we see that every day. Someone, Oxford University, or Someone in, 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 I think it was the Israelis jumped up yesterday, the prime minister, and said, you know, look, we've got this vaccine. Look, 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 look at Israel. Look at what we're doing. And I'm just taking a step back and thinking, I remember what someone said to me when my son's top Thomas had, Tom had brain cancer about seven years ago. He's, he's still with us, thank goodness. But he had a, he was diagnosed with a malignant brain tumor called a GBM, mm -hmm. uh, which which you really don't survive from, not many people do. And, and he was fortunate to be on the world's uh, first uh, uh, trial, clinical trial in a, on, a, on a particular spectrum uh, of, of drugs, which did the trick. It, 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 it reduced the cancer and eventually it's eliminated, or we hope it has. Mm -hmm. He still has an MRI every six weeks and will, will for the rest of his life. But the point I want to make here is that and that, that, that I, was, I remember seeing Dan having a conversation with, with, um, with one of the leading doctors there on, on, on the clinical trial. And I said to him, so do you collaborate with other, you know, bio, uh, with the other, other, other pharmaceutical companies and drug companies around the world? And he said, no, not really. We've been set up as a competitive model. And I said, so are there others looking to, 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 to um, to do this and he said yes we went. I said do you share yes we do share our results and so forth but we don't truly collaborate mm -hmm. 
Mm. And I said, what do you mean by collaboration? And he said, collaboration is where we come together and we come and we work, we bring all our talents and strengths into play for a common cause that transcends boundaries, transcends organizations, transcends nationalities. And where we start through the collective conversation that, 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 that we would see there, we would open up to each other. And I said, so what would happen if you did that? He said, we would find a cure for cancer. Yes. And, and, and I thought at the time, and I thought of that right now, as I look at the, it must be 60, 70 or 80, I've got no idea. Maybe more than that attempts to organizations working independently to find a cure for cancer. What if, uh, sorry, a cure for, you know, virus, for the virus, the, the, the yeah. vaccine. What if we, they were to work together? And then we also have this idea that we're seeing right now at, 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 at uh, different countries, some of them are able to respond quicker. Some of them are able to look after their people better. Some of them have a surplus of wealth and expertise but no one's sharing it. Yes, it's like you know? the, the selfish human nature or yes. the global. So, what, what, so that's, that's like a kind of, a, you know, I'm, 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 known as, I'm, known, I'm known as the strengths-based person. So I've started with a, a problem. So that's a, that's a, that is a problem. So it is a problem, it's a significant problem. So, so and manage, and, and I think a lot of our, of our leaders and our managers have been taught to throw fixes at problems. They've been taught what, we, what, what Professor Heifetz calls Technical management. Mm -hmm. Professor Heifetz is 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 is, is um, uh, a professor of leadership at Harvard and, and has done some extraordinary work over twenty years to identify the difference between uh, technical management and leading adaptive and adaptive challenge. And adaptive challenge is where um, what we have in place is no longer working. Where, where the experts don't have the answers, where, where uh, it requires new knowledge, where it requires behavioral change. An example would be, um, I, go to, uh, I go to a doctor, I've got a, a cold, not the virus, but I've got the cold, and, and, and I, I get prescribed penicillin by the doctor who's the expert, and the cold is cured. Now that's that's a technical uh, fix, and 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 as the patient, I really have no involvement in that except that I jump in a car. All the work is done by the expert, right? And 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 um, a lot of our world has been organised around expert leadership. I call that I call that, I call that the leader is hero. And not those, like copying. The leader is, yeah, yes, the leader is hero. But leadership as hero is failing us right now. Mm. The reason being is that there are no known answers to the situation that we find ourselves in, which can be resolved by individual experts or leaders as heroes. We need people to come together in a different conversation. And what an adaptive challenge is, an adaptive challenge is where it requires a fundamental change to behaviours, but also where the ordinary citizens need to be involved in the work to create solutions, but also to reimagine all the things that, 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 that are around us. An example, again, with adaptive challenge would be the medical example. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, I have a heart attack. Um, I go, go in uh, to the doctors, get me into the surgery. They do massive, they do very sophisticated surgery, heart surgery. They fix up some of the tubes and whatever it is but the underlying problem still remains because it's a lifestyle issue yeah. uh, something like only 20 percent of 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 cases where there are significant um, um, um surgery undertaken but where there's underlying lifestyle issues people revert back to the behavior what it requires is is for, for people to change their behavior and to partner with the experts so, and an adaptive challenge, what Heifetz argues, and which, are, which is something I, I, I have seen in my own work in this space, when I work with organizations to, to, who, who, who are struggling with adaptive challenges, 
mm. is that an adaptive leader is someone who recognizes that the people themselves have to own the problem. They have to own the solutions. And that means the leader needs to shift the conversation to one of authority and top-down management to one of inclusion and bringing the diversity of, of every single person into the room to have adult conversations mm -hmm. around, um, around what are the real issues and how can we come up with a better way of, 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 of organizing, uh, sharing and thriving together. And that I think is the future. What I'm, my hope now is that we will see as we come, as we go through this virus, I don't think we're out of it yet by a long way. Mm -hmm. um, we'll start to see people start to challenge those old style authoritarian expert models of, of leadership, which are failing us right now. Um, whereas we will start to see new forms of, of leadership emerge, which will host conversations. And that's where the social tech comes in, like we're seeing now with, with this, the, the Zoom call, where we'll start to see people forming movements and connections and collaborations, and the voice of the people will start to, 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 to be heard again. And, uh, and, and I call that bringing the non-usual suspects into play. That's my big hope for the future now, that, that we'll see the new adaptive leaders, or the leaders as, 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 as hosts, start to emerge yes. uh, and, and share and, and engage us in new conversations. But these adaptive leaders, like all over the world, as you said, are like getting like a very slowly, like the, the, this movement is not moving at the pace that the, the world is moving. I mean, they are more selfish or more introspectively working, not all together or in contributing um, between different um, countries or places. Do you think it yes. will take longer for these adaptive leaders or this collective factor, as you say, to come together? Or it will be like um, faster in the near future? I think it'll be, I think it'll take the form of a social movement. Mm. So it'll be more movement based than organization based or institution based. Um, I think it, I think the leaders will rise up and some of them will be young young kids. Some of them will be in secondary school, believe it or not. Some of them will be at university. Uh, I have a great hope for the new generation of, of young people coming into the workforce. I know that some of the millennials, I know there is this view of the millennials, I call them generation G. <laughs> Those born from 1993, Generation G. Why for, here's my own word, globality, <laughs> right around the world. They're wired for generosity. They're wired for causes, social causes. They're wired for good, G for good. They want to see, and they challenge things in the way my baby boomer generation didn't challenge. Mm. Young kids now will not accept the kind of excuses that, that I put up with. Uh, uh, you know, my, 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 my parents came out of the Second World War and they were grateful just to, just to get back and have a job. And, and, and I remember my mother saying to me, work hard, study hard, get a job, put your head down, don't rock the boat, just accept things, mm -hmm. get a house and, and that's all you need to do. And, I, and we kind of accepted that. And, and the young kids don't get that now. They, they have been, and the reason is they've been connected on these smartphones for since they were five or six. My granddaughter yesterday, we were teaching her, she's on six, eight years old, and she's got this, you know, uh, she's got that a tablet in front of her, and she's got, and she's doing all this, she's, and then she's talking to her friends. And she's also done some, some YouTube videos on, on, a, on, on a, they're called, they're called a Ruby in Isolation. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and they're going around the world, and she's talking to people in, in Argentina, where you yeah, are. She's yeah, very smart. That's where that they're used to this, and they also she's writing about things like sustainability. So she's eight years old, and her classroom is talking about sustainability and climate change, and homelessness, and domestic violence, and 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 they're doing it at eight years old. Yes. They will not accept and put up with this kind of non-inclusion for too much longer. So you think that the word would be like more. You are very positive, you have a very positive um, view 
as it grows. Well, it? yes, I do have a positive view, and I think also, I think I think it's important to switch the conversation from fear to love. I, I, I really believe that, that right, so much of the leadership and so much of the response is fear-based. The media is fear-based. Mm. You know, the media is all about the negative and, and what's not yeah. working and rather than elevating or lifting, lifting people up. I don't listen to the news because it's terrible. I mean, very, I feel like depressed and I feel that there are so, I cannot help, you know, with many situations. It's out of my scope. So it gets, it, it's not good for me. So I decided just to listen to the basics or just to be, you know, um, aware of what's going on, but not all the time because it's terrible. There is a time now, I think, uh, I am involved in a number of conversations with people uh, in Australia, overseas, where we're talking about what does this time mean now yeah and 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 you know what should be your attitude right now and and mm. and and what what are the kind of conversations you should be having and with whom should you be having those conversations as you know we're we're, we're you're part of a um uh, a linkedin group called equity at, equity mm -hmm. at work and Fantastic. that was started up by a group of young uh, interns at, at in miami but ultimate software uh, and also some other uh, uh, older members of the of, of of the staff there who are passionate about engaging a global conversation around equity at work. What that means is the recognition that you know a lot of people don't have the same opportunity to, th to thrive at work. Uh, we have this wonderful new tech now, the four IR tech, which is you know the big data, the AI, the, the machine learning, all those kind of things, semantics, all, all those kind of things, which are seeing whole new patterns, but. The tech has been put in the hands of individuals now, but it's, but, but it, these, the tech is forcing us to understand that not everyone has equal access. And it's not, you can't just talk about tech, you've got to talk about the kind of stories and conversations and, and experiences that people are going to have now in, in what it means to do what I call the new life work, which is an integration of life and work. Um, but these, these young kids, uh, they're passionate about causes and, 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 uh, I was just talking with four or five um, colleagues in the, in, in the, on a Zoom hookup about 10 days ago, and we, and we said, let's start a conversation um, uh, around, you know, what should be uh, the, the, the debates and conversations now around future of work, post-COVID, future of leadership. What does it mean? What do we take forward? What do we, what do we let go of? So as you know, I put it out there just a few days ago, and we have a lot of our LinkedIn posts have been, you know, two likes, three reviews, four comments. It's had 166 comments in about 10 days, but the comments are a are, are deep, deep, rich flow of, of ideas about, you know, what, what, um, what this means. So it's tapping into, into something. And so, you know, we're thinking now is a great opportunity uh, in, in the time of, of great uh, uh, distress in for many people and uncertainty to have a different conversation. And I think the conversation is something like this. It is about recognizing that we don't have the art. Human beings desperately want answers, don't they? Yeah? They want, and, and, and we are used to being, and so, so expert leadership models have created dependency. And those dependencies are where, where you and I have to wait for the authorities to tell us what's happening and, and, and um, how to respond to it. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think those, those, those and, and a lot of our leaders, are, I look at the, 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 the and again, I, I believe in elevating our leaders, but they don't have the answers. And I just wish sometimes our system would, would I think that, that they had the courage or the, 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 the ability to get up and say, I don't have the answers to this. To be fair, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. But you see, if, they, if a leader gets up in Parliament or says that, or in front of the media, they get they get shouted down because what you don't have the answers. You're supposed to have the answers. No, no, you're supposed to lead a different conversation where we all come together to to yeah. to create but those. For ideas. that, you need you need to be like humble and brave yeah. enough to accept that you need the collaboration of the group 
that you cannot do it all alone because we are not perfect. No one can do it all alone. Winston Churchill, um, you know, the, the great wartime leader <coughs> so, in England, mm -hmm. um, you know, after, after the, you know, if you go back to 19, 1940, when the German forces were yeah. just, just, just going right through Europe and one country after another was falling over, boom, 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 boom. And of course, the, the, the France fell over and, 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 and the British army then was evacuated from Dunkirk and all those thousand small mm. boats took them all back to the UK. And oh, there was yes. Britain alone for a period of time facing the most uh, powerful military machine probably the world's ever seen. Britain had not prepared. It wasn't ready, just like it's not ready today for the virus, to be <laughs> honest. For some reason, the Brits would take a bit of time to get things started quickly. but. Churchill got up in Parliament and he said, we have now seen a miracle, the miracle of Dunkirk. And our troops, many of our troops have come back, but do not think this is a victory, he said. We must not just confuse defeat with victory. He said, I have nothing to offer you except blood, toil, sweat and tears. This, and he said, I don't know what the answer is right now, except we've got to come together and, and to, together we can achieve a great deal. And then he painted the picture of a better world. Yeah. Where if we stay together and we stay together and we are united, we will engage strengths and innovation and courage that are qualities that the German hierarchy won't be able to match. Yeah. And 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 he 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 that was inspirational leadership. But he was honest. He didn't say, look, this is the answer. He didn't say, I know the answers. He said, I've got nothing to offer you but toil, blood, sweat, and tears. Yes. But I do have a vision for a better world. Mm -hmm. And together we will we will get through this, he said, but we need to go together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He shows his vulnerability and he was very open and his people followed him. All of them. I mean, he he inspired his people. I think to to be all together in that fight. And I mean, you think about the conversation we're having now. I mean, I mean, the the, the virus has created a a space mm. for us to reflect. Again, it's High Fitz who says adaptive leaders take their people off the dance floor and on the balcony <laughs> to take time out to have a reflective conversation and i think now is the time to have those kind of reflective conversations and and to recognize that that that, that this is not just about doing it's you know we have become crazily busy in our world mm. over the last 30 or 40 50 years i, I can my wife still and i were having a conversation about the fact that our lives have been full become con consumed with with fast pacedness and doing and, and, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and 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 at first when we when everyone's at home people go what do we do now <laughs> well you can think meditate reflect yeah breathe. <laughs> you know take time out go inside yourself not outside this is a time for going inside a little bit more with ourselves and with the people we love and 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 people to have a di a different conversation i think sure and 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 to come out of it we can't change what we can't change accept but we can mm -hmm. accept it so then we can start to open up and look at and i think also to look at look at what we have got you know and and to take time out to think about what we have got and not what we've lost um but there are, for, there are questions now what are we going to keep yeah. What are we going to restore? What really, have we found, doesn't really matter? <laughs> what's, mm -hmm. not, what's not really important anymore? What new things or ways of being and doing can, can we come up with now? Because I don't think it's going to be just a question of, you know, you, you, you hear all the time people going, oh, look, I can't wait to get back to work and, you know, I can't wait to get back to that. Yes, of course, some of that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to have 
have bacon and eggs on a Sunday morning in a nice cafe. That's great. You know, um, but some things are going to change. Yeah. And I think now is the time to have conversations and, and to connect with people. And I think it's important to connect with people who are positive. Yes. And, and then to give to others who need a helping hand, yeah? Exactly. So, Jeremy, um, to round up, you think that with that attitude, like a collaborative and adaptive attitude towards um, the future, professional, like uh, your <clears throat> personal lives and your new life after this quarantine or this uh, new world, we will be able to... Um, to navigate and, and thrive in the new possibilities that the world will take If on. I was not, I, I would leave this thought, one thought. Imagine it's like, I don't know, who knows, let's say six months from now, <laughs> and you're back in, the, back in the workplace, wherever that is, <laughs> and you've got your manager there, <laughs> and you're having some sort of performance review, and 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 your manager and you ask your manager who's a very wise manager your manager is one of the new emerging host leaders and you're having your performance review and and you say to your manager what do you think is the question you should be asking me now and your manager turns around to you and says in the six months that you were in isolation during the virus what did you give to others? Mm. What did you give? What was it? How did you help someone to survive and then learn to thrive in this time? How did you lift up another human being? Not about you, not about your survival, but what did you do to help someone else get through this in a way that they will, that saw them grow? And at the same time, as they grew, you also grew as a person in community. That would be the question. That's the conversation. Perfect. I totally agree. Because when you give, you are also receiving. Like it's a two way. It's not only to the outside, it's also to you. When you help someone who is perhaps very lonely or who needs help or who needs your voice or who needs your con companionship or whatever, even not like physically, as you say, but socially, via telephone, via video calls, via knowing that you are there just uh, and they are not alone. I mean, there are many people living alone and very isolated. Yes. And so, for example, just, just perhaps to finish up here, it would be say, imagine if when we look back at this time, at the best of this time, not the worst, but at the best of this time, we will realise, many of us, I hope it's many of us, will realise that we actually went to another level of checking, checking in with each other. Mm. How are you going? How are you coping? You're right, Mr. You know, are you right? You know, and, and, and we are probably checking in with each other more than we've ever done before. At least where it's working. I, I hope that's the case in many, in with many families and many in many, 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 many relationships. I hope it is. Real connections. Yes. What if we were to take that new way of checking in mm. with each other into the into the experience of life and work after the virus? Yeah. What if? Sure. That would be fantastic. We will understand. We will learn the lesson. <laughs> we will have learned the lesson if that happens. Yes, and then we won't need then we won't need inclusion programs or experts to tell us about how to do diversity. <laughs> it'll be a, it'll be a conversation and a way of being together. Sure, that's that's true. Well, perhaps we can meet again <laughs> in some months and check in and see how this evolves and how's the world in some months and how's their relationships and our service based um, professions how they, they, uh, they, are, they are doing and how we are working, you know, like really connected. Not, we are all connected, but perhaps we are not 
connect, really connecting, you know, between ourselves and our conversations are not being really listened to. You, you listen to the other, but in fact, you are not listening, truly listening to the other. So to have the collaborative environment um, enforced for true. And I think this is about checking in from who we are. It's, it's individual to individual, human being to human beings. We're human beings, not human doings. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes forget that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we're supposed to forget that. We're supposed to be, it's all about doing and consuming and the yeah. results and outcomes. Yeah. Well, Meantime, Jeremy, the sun, sun arises in the morning and, and the sun's risen. It's another day. It's another world uh, yeah. and another opportunity. So thank you very much for the a opportunity. New to with you. A new beginning, yes. It's, a, it's a been a pleasure uh, listening and talking to you today. We will um, write down all your... Um, the, where people can find you, what's the best way to, to find your journey? Absolutely, and, and that would be fantastic. Love to have, I love conversations. Uh, we're all, we've all got something to talk about. And, and yeah, if, if you're interested in this conversation around the future of work and, and the future of leadership uh, post COVID, please join us in the Equity at Work uh, group on LinkedIn. Uh, if mm -hmm. you want more information, we, we can, you and I can, can share that with people. We're both members of that group, aren't we? So, uh, absolutely. Sure. We will post all your social media uh, for, for people to follow you and be updated on all these um, adaptive um, collaboration environments that will evolve. And thanks a lot, Jeremy. Stay safe Pleasure. and have a yeah. beautiful, yeah. sunny day there in Australia. Thanks, yeah. But best to, best to Argentina. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. See, See you. Bye-bye.